Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, continuing the normal course of action with this video. After yesterday's video, just want to say thank you guys for all your support and all your comments on that. Um, it was uh, something new, just trying something new, uh, and I feel like you guys received it well. And it was nice to have a conversation with some of you guys in the comments just about some of my thoughts on all the events that have happened in the past week with FIFA and stuff like that. But we're moving on from that and we're focusing on what's happening in this game. Today is Rewards Thursday. You guys are probably waking up watching this video about to rip your weekly rewards or something around that time frame. This video will be going live a little bit before rewards. Uh, so if you're looking to make some like last minute uh, weekly Thursday flipping investments, look out for some open bids on the market. Open bids and special cards, especially with good chemistry styles. That helps you sell those cards um, after rewards. But I want to talk about... Things that happened in this game today, because there were a ton of market movements based around one SBC today. You guys know which one that was. Of course, we got the player moments, uh, Trezeguet. But the big SBC today is this guaranteed Shape Shifters player untradeable, non-repeatable. So it's very similar to the Winter Refresh guaranteed SBC that we had a couple weeks ago with that promo. When I first saw this today, I was like 87 rated two team of the weeks. That is a lot. But technically, you know, when you think about it, it's not as bad as it originally seems. 221,000 coins to complete that SBC, which honestly doesn't seem that terrible to me as it initially did. I thought that SBC was going to be like 400,000 coins right off the bat. Um, but, uh, you know, evidently an 87 rated squad isn't that much. Now, is it actually worth it? It is a risk. And I'm going to talk you through some things. If you haven't done the pack already, I'm on the fence about it, honestly. At first, I was a hard no. And right now, I think I'm on the fence because high rated golds continue to rise. And I want to be, I want to talk about some high rated golds today as well, because some of these prices uh, are really get, starting to get inflated. And we're starting to, in my mind, get to a place where it might be time to sell our club stocks, especially on some of the really high rated stuff. So we'll talk about that a little bit today as well. But from the Shapeshifters guaranteed pack, I have seen so many people packing duplicates of what they've had untradeable in their club. I've seen so many people with pictures like this. This is my number one fear if I do this SBC that I'm going to be getting an untradeable Conte center back card when I already have the untradeable Conte uh, in my squad. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at my ultimate team, my squad right here, I have four players in my starting 11 that could possibly get, uh, that have a shapeshifters card that if I pack their shapeshifters, I would have a second version of them untradeable. And there's, there's just something in this game. It increases your luck. It, we see it all the time, right? We see it all the time on Twitter and you guys are probably experience, experienced it yourself. I've got Messi, Mendy, David Luiz and Conte all untradeable. So I, you see it all the time that people pack untradeable versions of, you know, like the, of the special card they already have, right? It seems like you have an increased pack luck if you already have an untradeable special version of that player in your squad. It's just crazy, but that's the way that it seems. So that's why I'm on the fence with opening this. Now, would I mind a David Luiz, a Ferland Mendy, or a Messi? Well, no, I would not turn any of those down. Uh, but I think Conte would be the one I'd be the most disappointed with. If I were somehow able to pack myself a uh, Shapeshifter Conte, because I already have the better version of it, right? All these other versions are better that are in packs right now with the Shapeshifters than what I have in my team. So we'll see if I end up doing the SBC or not. This is, you can think of it this way. If you have not done the SBC yet, and let's say you don't have a ton of stuff in your in your club to do it. If you're doing weekend league flipping or Thursday flipping today, if you can make... Um, that SBC costs 200k. If you can make 200k from rewards today, I don't know where all you guys are at with your coins and how much you have and stuff. But if you can make 100 to 200k with rewards today, or trade, you know, to make that many coins in the next couple of days, kind of motivating you to, you know, do that SBC for free, I guess you could say. That's one way that you can think of it as well. You can kind of trade to get that SBC, which is one way to look at it as well. But I want to talk about some market movements with these cards today. I tweeted out this morning that these cards were getting panic sold. I tweeted some screenshots and I said, hey, take a look at these cards because there should be a rebound. This is what happens with a lot of stuff like this on the market when there's a guaranteed SBC out. I referenced back to the, the SBC that was released during Winter Refresh that it was a one-time non-repeatable, um, just a one-time SBC, right? And it was an untradeable card that you were getting as well. So that was not putting supply 
onto the market. Now, what happens is people panic sell these cards heading into that SBC um, because they think they're going to drop in price, which, you know, if it was a repeatable SBC, which we never know until it actually comes out, if the SBC is repeatable, if the SBC is cheap, the value of the SBC, right? But today, there was a lot of panic selling. This was one of the guys that I was really keen on this morning, and I should have just ended up buying him. I could not get him at like 615 or below, which was kind of the target price that I set, because that was basically a 100,000 coin drop if I got 615. I should have end up, ended up buying him. I bought some other cards, flipped them for profit, but this one was the biggest mover on the day. You could get him around 620,000 coins. He now is at 715 pre-rewards. A lot of these cards moved from set one and set two. Actually, Vinicius was another card that was panic sold massively today because I think a lot of people are using this card and messing around with it. And look what happened. 398K all the way up now back to 470. So crazy rebounds on some of the most OP and some of the most used cards in this game that are shapeshifters right now. Like this Aloe card... He didn't move too much today, right? There were some cards from set one that I bought. Um, I bought a Lucas at 293,000 coins. I just sold mine at like 320. So that was a GG. I bought him Babu at uh, 370. He's now 400. So that's a GG. Dava Louise was 900K flat. Um, Atal was 450. Ben Yedder was 145 at one point. So like some of this panic selling was just kind of un especially for these cards that are out of packs like look how low ben Yedder was this morning dude he was one four five and now he's back to one six that is the power that, that just shows me that these cards are hyped up and people are using the position changes cards of the shapeshifters promo um so i found those market movements today that's just kind of a call when you see panic selling and you know that something is coming you know there is a, a bit of a gamble in that because you don't exactly know what kind of content ea is going to drop but Based on what we had seen before, we made an educated guess and we were able to make some coins today because of that. So if you saw stuff like that in the market, this is something, this is a learning thing, right? We don't have as many movements like this now than we used to in past FIFAs, in my opinion, just because of the way they run the game. But the last couple of promos, we've had a guaranteed SBC for some of these players. And that's kind of how it's going to be, I think, until we get to team of the season, because that's a big SBC, the guaranteed TOTS SBCs. People love those. People go hard for those. So this is kind of like, you know, you know, get, you know, getting you ready, getting you ready for those sorts of SBCs. So whenever you see a big time panic drop, though, on a, on a really hype up card like that Mendy or like that Vinicius, that's something that you should notice and really start to think about and say, hey, is there a rebound possibility with this SBC right here, I want to talk about rewards and transition out of today's content and talk about rewards now. Um, these cards, I'm really curious to see what happens today on two areas of the market after we can leave rewards. The Shapeshifters 2 squad, I'm really interested in and seeing what that happens with their prices. I think that you're not going to see some lower prices for these than what you saw in the panic selling this morning. A lot of times when you see panic on the market, that's when you hit the absolute lowest price because there's just more people selling than buying. Ronaldo was 233 earlier this morning. He's now back to 25. Will these cards drop with rewards? I honestly am not too sure. I don't think that they will, but it depends on one thing. Do you remember a couple weeks ago? And this was actually, I think it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I packed Prime Icon Moments Makalele. Um, it was during Winter Refresh. This, the week of Winter Refresh, they juiced rewards. People were packing Icon Moments. People were packing the Winter Refresh players, and all of those players were cheapest during rewards or that first second hour of rewards is when everything was the cheapest on the market because for whatever reason that week they like juiced the pack luck they it doesn't really matter what shows in the store i don't think they just juiced the rewards pack luck high rated i packed 89 rated kane and 88 rated koulibaly or, or 89 rated koulibaly whatever rating he is at the same time um, in the same set of packs when i packed makalele so that week they just juiced rewards and there was tons of those high rated and SBC fodder and just good quality pack pulls coming out of the game with rewards. And that's something that changes every week. That like the pack weight during rewards is really dynamic every week. So what happened last week with the first set of shapeshifters, nobody packed squat during rewards last week. Uh, fodders weren't really packed. I mean, from what I saw on Twitter, from what I saw from you guys, last week rewards were pretty dry, right? And nobody was packing the shapeshifters. And what happened with those was... The first set of shapeshifters was actually the cheapest before rewards because there were people. We I told you guys I was like, hey, based on what happened last week, re referencing winter refresh, 
these cards went down uh, and they were their cheapest um, during rewards because they got packed. But what happened was we actually got supply during rewards uh, and they went up. It was the opposite this last week. So EA flipped it up again. So I'm wondering this week if they're going to supply cards again onto the market, supply the team of the week, supply icons, and supply these new shapeshifter squad cards in set two. And then uh, you will... You'll maybe see some of these drop a little bit, but I'm still I'm still just not sold on that yet because these cards have been very unpackable this entire week. There's not been many people packing this set of shapeshifters. So if you want to buy one of these guys for your team, you might have missed, for some of these, you might have missed the absolute buy time. Like we've been looking at Ferland Mendy with this price here at 619K. That's probably going to be the lowest you're going to see him until we see more panic, right? I doubt that he gets that low again with rewards today. So just be careful with this stuff. Uh, the buy time, like the best buy time for a lot of these cards might have been this morning. Somebody like Trent Alexander Arnold, who I actually have some of my transfer list right now at 170K. I do feel like this card is going to rebound after he goes out of packs, but I'm just not entirely sure if he's going to get hit with reward supply. He could very easily be 150K in the morning after rewards. So that's kind of my thoughts on uh, how the shapeshifters will react to rewards. And I'm honestly considering, you know, I've, I use Ederson as like my basis, right? Because I have a tradable Ederson on my club. I've been watching this guy's price like a hawk to see, is it my time to sell him yet? And I think it might be, if you want to, if you're watching this video before Weekend League Rewards comes out, you have an opportunity to cash out on some of your high rates at a pretty high price because always with rewards, there is some, depends, the severity of it depends every week. But I think right now I might go and cash out on some of these 88s and 89 rated players. Only the 88s and the 89s though, because I think these are just too high at the moment. These prices right here that we see for 88 rated and 89 rated players, we're going into a pack supply for weekly league rewards and then more pack supply probably on Friday for another promo with lightning rounds and stuff like that. That's why I'm considering selling my 88s and my 89s only because these cards are inflated a ton, right? I think I bought a cool Bali or I bought a cane for a club stock in my club. I think I bought this cool Bali at like 34K, right? Where was he at last week? He was 34,000 coins. The man is now up to 44,000 coins. And I told you guys earlier this week to hold off on selling your fodder yet. And if you want to take the coins on 88, 89s and probably 90s as well, be my guest. Be my guest on taking the profit on these two sets of cards. 87s are getting close. They're pretty expensive, but 86s, I don't think we want to sell yet. Same with 85s and 84s. Continue to hold on to those because a lot of the SBCs that we saw today, uh, especially that shapeshifter guaranteed, right? 87 rated squad, you're going to have people using a lot of 86s, 87s, 88s, and 89s. Why do the 88s and 89s go up with an 87 rated squad? Well, think about it probably some of the cheapest solutions for some of these squads have 89 rated golds in them because an 89 rated gold can help you out with rating a lot more than SBC for a cheaper value than what an, like an 87 rated inform could do, right? So you can use an 89 rated gold and then use an 85 rated inform, which will make the inform a lot cheaper and drag down the SBC cost overall because your inform that you're buying is cheaper. Does that make sense? So a lot of the a lot of the cheaper solutions that I've seen have a lower rated inform and they're utilizing some of these 89s, 88s and 90s even in the solution. So that's why I'm saying take the money on some of these high rated. You know what? I'm going to go do it right now. See who I have that's tradable. And um can I filter this by tradable? Sort by tr value high to low? No, I don't want that. Uh no filter. All right. I'll just I'll just see what I have in the club here. And probably I'm going to take some coins on these cards because they're just up enough for me to be happy with it, right? Suarez, untradeable. Allison, oh my gosh, man. I have so many untradeable high uh, fodder. This is tempting me to go do that SBC today. Ederson's really the only one. Really. I'm going to send that to the transfer list. And Danovich, is he, is he tradable? He is tradable. Thank you. Godin has to be tradable, yeah? Godin is untradable. When did I pack all this stuff, bro? All right, so I don't have a lot of 80s. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I thought I had more 88s and 89s in my club, uh, but evidently I do not. They're all uh, they're all untradeable, which is, uh, you know, kind of waiting for a big time SBC that I actually want to do, which I don't think I've found yet. Um, but I'm probably going to cash out on some of these. Ederson was 35K, right? So I'll sell Ederson for 35,000 coins and I'll take the money there. As you can see, stuff on my transfer list right now, I've got some man of the match cards. Some uh, a couple of the shapeshifters and stuff like that. 
that's basically all that I'm into right now. I've just been trading mostly, right? Just just quick flips and trades have been kind of the, the thing that I've been going for right now um, with uh, the stuff that's been going on in the market. That's what I've been focused on the most. But really quickly at the end, as I'm selling some of these cards, I want to chat with you guys about, wow, what? How much is Handanovich? Excuse me? Handanovich is how many coins? Why is Ederson way more than Handanovich, dude? Wait, 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 wait. Did I, did, is Ederson not actually, yo, did I list my Ederson for 35K or for 45K? What is going on with me here, boys? Did I, I hope I list my Ederson for 35K. How much is uh, Handanovich again? I think I'm, uh, I'm losing my mind right now, dudes. What the heck? How much is Handanovich? All right, that, all right, that's more like it. 30, 36K, yes, okay, all right, there we go. 36,000 coins. We'll go Handanovich at 36K. 36K. Um, where is he? Let me find him, let me find him. There's 88 rated Handanovich. I bought him for 27. I will gladly sell him for, you know what, let's go Let's go 37. See if we can get a little nab at 37K. That's a GG. Anyways, uh, promo this weekend. And if you're doing some Thursday flipping, sorry this video is running long already. Uh, if you're doing some Thursday flipping, make sure you get out by 6 p.m. UK. That's the safest way to do it, just to be safe, of course, that we because we're probably going to get a new loading screen today. There are a couple options for the next promo that we could have, and I want to talk about this really quick. We'll probably talk about it more tomorrow, um, headed into the promo on Friday. Uh, but Foot Player Days is something that ran a year ago where we had uh, best of buy one, get one free packs and best of informed players. Uh, so this could be a massive, massive downturn for the market as well this weekend. Whenever we have half price packs or two for one packs, that is crazy for the market. There's lots of panic selling because people go nuts for those. Um, crazily enough, they do. But uh, this is something to keep an eye out for tomorrow with a loading screen, which I do think we will have. And of course, we're supposed to get, um, we could also have Carnival this weekend, but I feel like that would be more for maybe next week and not this weekend. So think about Carnival is on the radar, but not happening yet. And then this was the screen that came into the game earlier this week with the Economy Bowl Libertadores. Uh, we're going to be get, getting some sort of content this this weekend on Economy Bowl Libertadores. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like, if it's going to be a full-fledged promo, or if they're just going to be throwing some random stuff in the game uh, for this competition. So we will see what happens with this, because Friday we're getting some content. I would expect a loading screen today. That's what they've been doing the past multiple amount of weeks on FIFA on Thursdays is dropping a loading screen. So I'll be on the lookout for that. Watch out for your weekend league rewards, monitor the market, see what kind of supply is coming on for icons, for the shapeshifters and for the high rated fodder and for your 88s and 89s. I think I would take the money if I were you guys. So without making this video any too much longer, thank you for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any comments or any questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.